Hi guys, as some of you know, I recently lost my bow dye, which I'm heartbroken over. Um, I had a Studio Calico dye that makes these really awesome bows that I love, and I really love bows. I got into bows about a year ago, and I've just been obsessed with them. I go through phases where I use more bows than other phases, um, and right now I'm definitely in a bow-loving phase. So uh, I have this dye that some awesome person on YouTube sent me. Thank you so much for sending me this dye. I made tons and tons of bows before I eventually, unfortunately, lost <sighs> my bow dye. So, <laughs> so um, in my last, one of my last projects, I was, I, I kind of saved for the end, I thought I had my bow dye, and so I, for the very end, I saved the idea of um, making a bow, and then I couldn't find my bow dye, and so I had to just kind of make one, and I measured, I took apart this, one of these, I, I made a whole bunch while I still had it, luckily, so I have a ton of these. Um, I took one of these apart, and I traced it, and outlined it, and um, cut it out in a different pattern paper, and was able to make one just on my own. In doing that, I, I drew out all of these numbers, and tried to make a formula for you to make a, your own bow, and then I just decided that the measurements, and stuff was just way too complicated so what I did was I um, took a combination of this bow which is the studio calico bow that you get when you make when you use the dye and this bow which is a crepe paper bow embellishment that came out maybe two or three years ago and so I took two of the I took one of these apart and one of these apart and I came up with a new template for uh, making bows. It looks kind of like sunglasses. And so uh, then I traced it onto a piece of cardstock and I also made the underlying piece and I also made the little uh, piece that wraps around it to make it look like a bow. Now I usually don't use this piece. I usually just stick something in the center. I like a staple in the center or a little enamel dot or a little sticker or something, a little heart. A heart punch out is really cute too. So I usually don't use this but I did um, make one just in case you guys want to use one. And I traced the whole thing out, all three of those pieces out onto this. And then I took a picture of it so that you guys could, or I didn't, I, I scanned it, so that you guys could use this. And now when, when I print mine up, it comes out way smaller for some reason. I, I specifically put it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper so that when it scanned, it would scan it and save, I, I assumed that it would print properly if I did that, but it's still printing quite a bit smaller. So this this PDF is available on the Facebook group. Um, it should be posted right under the post for this video that you're watching right now. So if you need it, uh, go pick it up, go check it out, and I would recommend that you print it at either 150% or 175%. And so what I did was I just put this one inch marking on it. I would just keep on printing it at different sizes onto just regular computer paper until one inch is actually one inch long. So as you can see, you can tell that this is not big enough because it's not one inch long. So this would work, but it's going to make you a really, really tiny bow that's probably going to be very difficult for you to fiddle with to get it looking good but it might it, you know it'll come out about half the size of these so so just keep that in mind you'll want to print it a little bit bigger uh, so you can check out that I'll link in the information section for this video I'll link to my Dropbox that has this file on it and it's also going to be in the Facebook group if you're doing the make a handmade embellishment challenge which is our international scrapbooking day one of our challenges for our crop so um, I'm going to make one right now. So what I did was, what I would recommend that you do is print this up onto a piece of computer paper at the right size, so this one is actually too small, and then cut it out. And then what I did was I took a piece of Heidi Swap packaging and I traced the cutout onto this so that I could cut out a heavier version of it. Basically, you want a good stiff version of it. And then you can just hang on to this, put it in a little envelope or something and hang on to these. And then any time that you want to make a bow, you've got this template already ready for you. So I'm just going to grab myself a pad of pattern paper and make myself a bow right now. 
For this project today, I'm going to use this Polka in the Dark paper pad from Lawn Fawn. This is, I'm pretty sure that it's fall or Halloween themed, but I really like the patterns and I think they're small enough that they'll look really cute on a bow. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a purple bow. And I think I'll make a striped purple bow instead of a heart patterned purple bow. Maybe I will make it part and part. So I'll take those two pieces of paper. I'm going to zoom in my camera. And one thing that I would recommend since we're going to be hand cutting these is that you actually trace on the wrong side of this paper. That actually makes it really easy for you guys to follow along with me because it, the wrong side of this paper happens to be blank. And so if I were to make my bow out of, I think I'll make my bow out of this. The striped paper. So I'm just going to hold this template down and again this is the template that I would have cut out of the, the computer paper first and then traced it onto a piece of cardstock and then uh, or chipboard and now I'm tracing my chipboard piece because it's just much easier to trace chipboard than it is to trace a piece of paper. I find whenever I trace a piece of paper it kind of crumples up and doesn't stay flat and I don't know, maybe I don't have the greatest tra tracing skills, but it never seems to work all that smoothly when I'm tracing a cut out piece of paper. And now I will trace the little back piece. This is sort of the base of the bow. This is what your bow is going to stick to. And if you already have a manufactured bow that you just took apart, you'd be tracing that instead of this. If you want to have a bow that looks exactly like one of these crepe paper bows or whatever brand of bow you have, you would just take this apart and uh, it comes apart pretty easily. It's glued together. You might need to use your scissors to snip it in different places depending on the kind of glue, but that's what you would be tracing if you didn't want to use my, my template. I don't have great computer skills for like making digital files and stuff, so I apologize that it's probably not going to print at the right size for you. Maybe it will, maybe maybe it was my mistake in the printing process. I just printed it from my phone, so maybe if I had printed it from my computer, it would have printed at the proper size. Who knows? Okay. That's the benefit of tracing on the back side is that if you trace poorly like I did, that stray mark isn't going to interfere with my bow at all. So now I'm just going to take my scissors, and I can't find my fussy cutting scissors. They're in here somewhere, but I'll just use my big scissors to cut around this. These definitely look like a pair of sunglasses. And what I have found with this is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you'll notice that my drawing is very, it's not the greatest drawing. And it doesn't seem to matter. Like your bow still looks nice, even if the lines are a little bit shaky and they're not exactly perfectly cut. I tried to make it as even as possible so that it would look nice. But these bows are fairly forgiving. And if you wanted your bow to be a little bit bigger, you could just cut out a little bit on the outside of the line. And if you wanted your bow to be a little bit smaller, you could just cut out on the, um, on the inside of the line. So you can resize it a little bit just on the fly if you wanted to. If you wanted to make big adjustments to it, you might, you could, I suppose you could probably just print it at an even bigger size, like you could print it at 200% and get a really big bow, or you could print it at the, what ends up being the regular size for me, uh, which is, it looks like it's about a hundred, it's about half the size that it should be, or a little bit more than half the size. And this looks a little bit wonky, and I tried to make it as even as I could, but this keep in mind that this is the base piece and you're not really going to see much of it. So it's okay that it's not perfect, either when you're cutting it or the way that I have it drawn. 
And if you have better drawing skills or tracing skills than I have, then you might even end up with a better cutout than what I end up having here. This just goes to show you that you don't have to have any fancy design skills to do these kinds of projects. You just cut it out, trace it, cut it out, and you're good to go. You'll see this is going to look a lot nicer than it looks like it's going to look once it's all done. So what I like to do before I start to make my bow is uh, round my this is the way that this bow is going to go. It, I drew it so that it has a longer piece on the bottom and a shorter piece on, so that it's sort of like an unbalanced bow. And so um, I just want to round this paper to make sure that it's not going to make a crisp score. Like I, I don't want it to fold, I want it to be curved. So I'm just using my fingers to help with that. just like so and then that's where I'm going to attach it I can take a little bit of adhesive and just run it right down the center here I just need a tiny bit I probably took more than what I needed just like that and then like that Oops, of course, that piece is covering up my adhesive now, so I need a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to trim this down a teensy weensy bit. just like that. And you know what, this would look really cute in a contrasting pattern. I thought it might, so I'm going to retrace this. Even a different color of the same pattern might look cute too. Remember how I liked this a little bit thinner, so I'm going to cut a little bit thinner there than what I had it drawn. And, oh, that looks really cute. I really quite like that. So, for a rustic look, one of the things that I've been doing with these is I've been I've been using my stapler to put them together because I really like that look. So I just have the the uh, centerpiece folded. I lined it up so that it's around the halfway point and then I folded it over. And I'm not even putting any adhesive. You could put adhesive if you weren't using a staple. And then I'm going to put the base in place like that and I just want it to be about equal length on both sides and then I'm going to pinch this here with my fingers so that it doesn't move get my stapler in place oh my stapler's out of staples ah. here's my tiny attacher let's see if we have better luck with that yeah there we go and then you can just kind of fluff it up a little bit if you want to. And then if you want to change the shape or the size or the length of this, like if that bow is looking a little bit too long for you, you could just kind of trim this off right there and there. And then try your fishtail ends again like that. 
and that, and that. I actually like that quite a bit better. So you just cut a little slit into the center just to find your center point and you can just eyeball it and then just attach, like cut a line from the outside corner to... It's hard with longer scissors. I'm used to doing these with my fussy cutting scissors, which I can't find. There. So there's my bow. It's really cute. And if I wanted, I could put a little enamel dot or a punched out heart or something in the center. Something like this in the center looks pretty cute. Covers up my staple, but it gives you a different look. or maybe a little enamel dot, or it's actually a nice way to use up some of the bigger enamel dots, which I don't tend to use the large enamel dots as much as the, as much as the little ones on my projects. The other thing that you could do is instead of having this go behind it, you could just use the bow as it's uh, on its own without the base, so there are lots of options. I will link the video that, ex that shows me using the die to make these bows because there are lots of dies by different manufacturers and I do have a video about how to use the Studio Calico die and in that I also talk about a couple of other ways that you can make bows using ribbon and a few other things. So check that video out as well. And uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that if you have a digital die cutter, there are bow shapes that you can buy from the Silhouette store or get online that will pre-cut a nice fancy shaped bow that's perfect every time that you can use as well. So this is an example of a handmade bow, but there are lots of other ways to make bows and you can, of course, also um, easily just buy bows that are already made by Crate Paper or by whatever other companies uh, make bows. I know that Bella Boulevard makes some really cute felt bows at different in different sizes. And the other thing that I just wanted to mention is that if you wanted to have a more symmetrical bow that didn't have such a big, this one is kind of flat on the top and then it's bigger down the bottom. If you wanted to have it be more symmetrical, you could just, when you cut it out, cut it more so that it is the same on both sides. So you could cut it so that these are not hanging down quite as much. You could measure down and make sure that you're doing it to the same length by uh, measuring down however long the space is and mark it on this one and mark it the same on this one and then just kind of make these shaved off a little bit more and then it'll look more symmetrical. I kind of like this one because I mean I have so many of these because I cut a whole bunch of these ones when I got my die that I have a whole bunch of these and I have a whole bunch of these and so I thought I would try an asymmetrical one. But if you have good drawing skills or even I don't even have good drawing skills you could always just make your own shape as well. You don't have to use my shape. So thanks so much for watching this little tutorial video for International Scrapbooking Day for the Make Your Own Embellishment Challenge. This is one idea of an embellishment that you can make by yourself for your scrapbooking page. Uh, there's lots of other ideas out there, so I can't wait to see what you all come up with. So thanks so much for watching, and have a really great scrappy International Scrapbooking Day.